for more on this fight on trade and the fight of the Democratic Party over it, let's bring in conservative talker Dr. Gina Loudon from San Diego tonight. Also with us tonight here in studio is Sirius XM talker Joe Madison. Great to have both of you with us. Gina, you first. Doctor, if I may, is this a real opportunity for Donald Trump to, to get the working folk of America to believe that he's the guy and Hillary is is not telling the truth about her position on the Trans-Pacific Partnership. How big an opportunity is this? Oh, I think it's a pretty big opportunity for Mr. Trump. I mean, he can he can say with a very straight face that he's going to change the way the establishment does things. And for the average guy, you know, sitting in a union hall somewhere that uh, is watching all this go down, you, you can't deny there is a big outsider vibe right now. That's just what people want. They want somebody that's going to break up the way business has operated as usual. And so far, Hillary's not signaling that she's really going to change much. She might change her mind on things but not going to necessarily change much as far as being an establishment is concerned. Being Joe, it doesn't look, concerned. Joe, it doesn't look good that they can't get this on the party platform if the two leading candidates, Bernie Sanders, of course, behind Hillary Clinton, she's going to get the nomination. But she has reversed on this, but then she won't allow it on the platform. What do you make of that? I don't know. And, and reality is I, I would agree with what, what has been said. It, it is an opening uh, for Donald Trump. Now, I'm... I did hear Bernie Sanders say we still have an opportunity to work this out. Mm -hmm. Now, what that means, I really don't know. But I su su suppose that there's some very intense discussion going on in the background. Now, you know that the AFL-CIO did endorse uh, Hillary Clinton. And one of the arguments that Trump made was that let's not uh, be so... Uh, quick to uh, go by what Donald Trump has said. Let's see what he does as it relates to his own businesses that do uh, business offshore. But Trump, but Trump, the head of the AFL-CIO, also said that if this deal goes through, there won't be a need for any other trade deals. It is going to decimate workers further and and certainly circumvent American law. Uh, no ifs, ands, buts about that. Yeah, we we yeah. we agree on that. That's why I said. I imagine there's some very intense discussions going on right now, and it's just a matter of seeing what will be the outcome before Philadelphia. Dr. Loudon, where is uh, the soft spot or, or the, the safe landing for Donald Trump on this issue? Is it Pennsylvania, Ohio, Michigan, the Rust Belt? I mean, can he win those states if he stays on this story? I bet he can. I don't know that we've ever seen a Republican candidate uh, really speak to the average American worker to the degree that Donald Trump is putting in this time and effort. And I think that he realizes that what politicians have been saying, uh, they've not been delivering, and he can point that out. And I think he can make a pretty good argument for the fact that the establishment in general, the establishment in both parties, have done them no favors despite a lot of promises, and that he's going to be different. Well, if he's going to be different, there's no question about that. There have not been too many Republicans that have gone after trade the way he has. Joe, what about that? Can, then, can he be believed? Well, he might can be believed. The question is, will the money follow him? I mean, that's, the, that's what's so ironic about this. Look, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, big business, uh, they, they want this. I mean, and so the reality is, who has been the uh, the big, big supporter of the Republican Party. It's mm -hmm. been big business. So the question is, can he be believed or will he do what he did with the Muslim issue? And that is start to what I refer to on my show, start to do the moonwalk like Michael Jackson, look like he's going forward when he's really sliding backwards. Do you think he is making a, a position change on, on the Muslim band? No, I, I think it's just a matter of, of, of once again, he realized and his campaign has realized since he now has some people on his campaign mm -hmm. that you have alienated a heck of a lot of people. So do you think he'll ever no, Mr. try Trump, to Mr. Mr. Trump and Mr. Trump never said he would ban Muslims. He always talked about a temporary halt. That's been his I don't I, it's been reported differently. But if you look at his actual words, that's been his position from I, day one. I think if you go back to those debates and the primary 
primary, you're going to find a Donald Trump that gave the, if he didn't say those actual words, let me tell you something. He rallied his base around the fact that he would ban Muslims. And that's why he's gotten the kind of support from these Muslim banners that he has. Dr. Loudon, why does he, why doesn't he just turn the, change the terminology to tightening security? Does it have to go to a ban? And would the Republican Party ever accept any kind of a ban? No, I think he was talking about a halt from the very beginning just until we figured out how to properly vet people before they're in our country committing terrorist acts like the ones we're seeing nearly every week, if not every day at this point. And I think the average American is very concerned about this. I know as, as just an average American citizen and a mother, this is something I, we, we have to find answers, Ed. And at least he's looking at answers rather than just placating business as usual. Yeah, but we have, we have, look, we have, more, we have more Americans that kill people in this country yeah. through mass killings than we have Muslims. Right. And this has been an anti-Muslim campaign from the very beginning. And we'll have to leave it there. Joe Madison, Dr. Gina Loudon, good to have you with us tonight. I appreciate your good time to so you, much. Ed. You bet. Thank you.